many politicians in the room? Just raise your hand. See one. How many of you are planning to go into politics? Please raise your hand. Just one. <laughs> that is the problem. See, all the smart one comes to colleges and universities, go to medical school, engineering school, go and do their job. The one from the bottom 5%, 10%, with few exceptions, go into politics, and they run your life, our life. That's where the problem is. All the trouble in the world can be fixed if it can be reversed. And more importantly, if we can use the technology that we saw to actually construct the politicians who are smarter, sensible, that would be a good solution. Let me start. The topic that I'm going to talk about is world peace with nonviolent strategies. Why is that important? And what can you do about it? What can I do? What can all of us do about it? Look at this list. Every country, we have problems. Thousands and thousands of people are dying every day. Is that necessary? Not really. Look at these pictures. You may think, well, I really don't care because it's their problem, it's not going to affect me. Well, it does. It came to us in 1861 as a civil war, 1941 as a Pearl Harbor, 1995 as Oklahoma bombing, 2001 as World Trade Center tragedy, it can come and hit you anytime, so it does matter. So let's talk about the title again, the world peace and nonviolent strategies. The peace actually came from the French word pace and the Spanish word pax. In general, the understanding is peace means absence of war and tranquility. And the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize winner, Professor Mohammed Yunus, who I work very closely with, according to him, peace is not just war, it also should be understood in a human way in a, from a broad social economic context. Uh, the political order, absence of human rights, environmental degradation, all of this causes loss of peace. The two biggest heroes in the non-violence world, Gandhi and Martin Luther King, explained that non-violence is not necessarily just external violence, it also goes into your internal violence. So it has to be understood from a broad perspective. In terms of strategies, Gandhi explained the nonviolence should be understood from the point of a brave person, not from a coward. And if you look at 1997 Nobel Peace Laureate Jody Williams, she is really strong on her language, says demilitarization is not a dirty word. Nonviolence is not non-action, and real peace we all need to work for. So if you look at this slide, this is my personal belief, that all the trouble in the world coming from two main sources. One is human greed, the other one is poverty. And if you look at this particular slide with the top three people and pretty much half the world's wealth is concentrated in the few people's hands. And, and next slide it will shock you. You have a billion dollar house, the most expensive house in the world, right next to the slums in the city of Mumbai in India. So 
there are 650 people, household worker, work in that private house. So you can imagine uh, the comparison. And there you have a $35,000 pudding on the one side and a restaurant in England, and then you have kids are making pudding from the rotten eggs on the street. There is a $10,000 martini in the New York hotel compared to the person picking food from the garbage. So if you look at the faces of greed, this is what it looks like. And if you want to look at the faces of poverty, this is what it looks like. And that's what I said in the beginning. These are the two main sources of all this problem. And Nelson Mandela, I think, said it very well that poverty is a man-made problem and it can be solved by human beings. And the things in the world have changed from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It is a lot more complicated now, but it also gives you, me, and everybody else an opportunity. The social media, the power of technology, if you look at the examples of Egypt and Hong Kong, Look what happened there. So it is possible to influence the existing structure with nonviolent way. And that's what Martin Luther King said when he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And if you look at this as an example, our country spends uh, almost Six hundred and forty billion dollar on military and related areas, and worldwide expenditure on military is about one point three trillion dollars. So just imagine if you take ten percent of that and reduce the military expenditure and spend that ten percent on food, housing, entrepreneurship, and health of poorer section in five years, you can almost eradicate the poverty from the face of this earth. So it's a huge opportunity for all of us. That's why President Carter said it very eloquently, that we cannot be the champion of peace and at the same time the biggest supplier, for, supplier of weapons for the world. Supreme Court didn't help us either. What Supreme Court has done in the next, uh, in 2014, April 2nd, basically removed the cap and provided an opportunity for individuals to actually influence the election. So, and you know the famous people who are now doing it. So today, politics is seen. That's why I asked you in the beginning, how many are going into politics? Only one person. The politics is considered a scene. Very few, almost no young people are thinking of going into politics. Our generation has lost it. So your generation, the younger generation, still have the opportunity to influence. So you need to think about it that why it is so important for you not only just to finish medical school, engineering school, or business school, or any other school, but also to look at the politics. And that was the point I wanted to make. So next November, we are bringing all 33 living Nobel Peace Laureate to Atlanta along with 19 organizational Nobel Peace Laureate to talk about world peace. As a part of that, I had the opportunity to go around the world, meet with all these Nobel Peace Laureates, and it was fascinating that not just the Nobel Peace Laureates, every other person, they are all influenced by the importance of nonviolence that was promoted by Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And they are coming to Atlanta to talk about world peace. The problem with the peace is that Talking about peace is not going to solve the problem. That's why I said it has to be 
added with a strategy. And what is the strategy? It's a very simple, the age old strategy. All of us, particularly the young generation, will have to think and go into this very basic steps. Register to vote, train others, motivate others to understand the importance, vote, and select qualified people to take the government. Because today, the entire world, not just this country, every country in the world, the government is so dysfunctional, it only protects, it does not represent, it only protects the interest of top two to three percent of the population. The rest of the population is at the mercy. So I'm not talking about any revolution, I'm talking about a very sensible basic strategy that you get, encourage others to register, to vote, take over, because if you don't, it will continue what the way it is happening. I'll give you one example. Every time there is a debate on gun control, every time there's a massacre on campus or anywhere else, these lobbies are so strong, there has never been a debate on gun control. It has been shifted to debate on what? Mental health, because they control all the politicians, and any politician thinking going against will get voted out. So coming back to that same point, you have an opportunity, you have a responsibility, you can influence the world, and if you do that right, anybody who is elected not doing their job to promote peace and reduce militarization, which is linked to reducing poverty and everything else, and which can establish world peace, you can recall those people and there is a real opportunity for you. And so my last point would be, when you leave today, do something good for you and for others and think about the whole country, not just how you graduate and get a good job and leave or start your own business. Those are important, but think about the future generation, your generation, what you want the world to look like. Do you want the world to look like what the comedian was saying earlier, blowing up, or you want a peaceful world where we can be sure that there will be a brighter tomorrow? Thank you very much.